This is the fourth in a series of computer science lessons about string matching algorithms and how to implement them. In the previous lesson of this series, you were introduced to some of the concepts that led to the development of the KMP algorithm. In this lesson, we'll take a closer look. You're going to learn more about the pattern pre-processing phase. That is, how to capture and store relevant information about any pattern before searching for it. You will see exactly what information about the structure of a pattern is captured, how it is stored and how it is accessed during a search in the event of a partial match. Before continuing, make sure that you're familiar with the KMP algorithm as covered in the previous lesson. We're going to create a table to summarise how to handle partial matches when searching for the word COCO. We'll generalise what we discover later. This kind of pattern pre-processing is the first task of a KMP computer programme before the search can begin in earnest. The table needs to store information about the way sequences of characters are repeated within each partial match of the pattern. Therefore, we are going to examine every possible partial match of this word and record how the search should respond if that particular partial match was to occur. The information generated will be stored in a so-called partial match table. This table goes by various names. Sometimes it's called the fail table, sometimes the LPS table. Knuth Morrison Pratt referred to it as the next table. I'm going to call it the partial match table for now. What really matters, of course, is what goes into the table. For every possible partial match, we're going to establish which index position of the pattern we need to reset the pattern pointer to. This is sometimes referred to as the fail value. Recall from the previous lesson what we did whenever we achieved a four-letter partial match, that is, a partial match containing everything up to and including index position 3 of this pattern. Ignore the rest of the pattern. The last two letters of this partial match are the same as the first two, so we reset the pattern pointer to index position 2. This partial match has a fail value of 2. Recall what we did when we achieved a partial match consisting of three letters. The last one letter of this partial match is the same as the first one letter of the partial match. So we reset the pattern pointer to index position 1. This partial match has a fail value of 1. When the partial match included only two different letters, we reset the pattern pointer to index position 0. The fail value was 0, as we did when the partial match included only one letter. Matching the whole pattern is of course a special case. We may want to stop searching because we found what we're looking for. On the other hand, if we want to continue searching for more occurrences of the pattern, then we can include a fail value, for want of a better word, for the whole pattern. The last letter of the pattern is not the same as the first, so we would reset the pattern pointer to zero. Let's work through another example and then we'll apply it to a search. Continuing with the sweet theme, let's pre-process the seven-letter word bonbons. A partial match including the first six letters, that is, everything up to and including index position 5, would require the pointer to be reset to index position 3, because the last three letters of the partial match are the same as the first three. We can make use of some established terminology here to help describe what it is we're actually looking for. Every substring of this partial match that starts from index position 0 is called a prefix. So the first letter at index position 0 is a prefix of the partial match. The first two letters also constitute a prefix of the partial match, as do the first three. The first four letters are also a prefix, and so are the first five. 
We don't, however, consider the whole partial match to be a prefix of the partial match. This partial match consists of six letters, so the longest proper prefix includes five letters. Every substring of this partial match that finishes at index position 5 is called a suffix. So the last letter, on its own, is a suffix. Remember, we are only looking at the partial match, not the whole pattern. The last two letters are also a suffix of the partial match. The last three letters constitute a suffix. The last four are a suffix, and so are the last five. To come up with a fail value for a particular partial match, we need to identify the longest possible prefix with an identical suffix. In the case of this six-letter partial match, bonbon, the three-letter prefix bon is the same as the three-letter suffix bon. So the pointer position is reset to index position 3 after this partial match. By the way, the partial match table is often called the LPS table because it's short for longest proper prefix with an identical suffix. Each value in this table is commonly referred to as an LPS value. I'm going to stick with this terminology from now on because it will be useful when it comes to implementing the KMP algorithm in code. Now, if this partial match consisting of five letters happened to occur, the longest possible prefix with an identical suffix is two letters long, so the LPS value is two. When four letters are matched to the input string before it fails, the longest prefix with an identical suffix is only one letter long, so the LPS value is one. If this three-letter partial match was to occur, there is no prefix with an identical suffix, so the LPS value is zero. The same applies to this two-letter partial match and any single-letter partial match. In this example, the whole pattern also has an LPS value of zero. So here is our finished partial match table. Let's see it in action. We'll search this input string for the pattern bonbons, and we'll consult the table whenever there's a partial match. The first couple of letters of the input string are not in the pattern. But then we find a partial match of two letters. When the third letter of the pattern fails to find a match, the table is consulted. The pattern was successfully matched up to and including the letter O at index position 1 of the pattern. So this is the index that is looked up. It has an LPS value of 0. So the pattern pointer is set to 0 and searching resumes from here. Another partial match occurs up to and including index position 3 of the pattern. According to the table, index position 3 has an LPS value of 1, so the search should resume at index position 1 of the pattern. A partial match up to and including index 0 of the pattern requires that the pattern pointer be reset to 0. The search continues. A partial match of 5 letters ending at position 4 has an LPS value of 2, so the pattern pointer should be set to position 2 this time. And the search continues. Whenever there's a partial match, the table is consulted, minimising the amount of checking that needs to be done. Ultimately, this particular search reaches the end of the input string without finding the whole pattern. But at least it was thorough, and there was no need to track backwards through the input string. In this sense, then, it was a success. Now that you know exactly what information about the structure of the pattern is captured,
before the search begins and how it is used during the search, you can start to think about how to implement the pattern pre-processing phase. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to generate the partial match table for any pattern programmatically. And in the lesson after that, you'll learn how to write a complete KMP search.